Welcome back to Undercover. We're here with uh, Omar and Cedric from the Mars Volta. Now, you, you're currently touring uh, your fourth album, Bedlam in Goliath. Uh, your arrangements are getting more and more out there. When you're writing these songs, do they just do you just jam them out, or or how how structured is it when you're actually piecing it together? No, we don't <laughs> we don't jam them out. That's a one of the big misconceptions of the band. One of the biggest misconceptions of the band is that because there are spaces for the live setting where we improvise, is that we just sit in a room and we jam them out and and. Um, you know, on one hand, it's really nice because it shouldn't uh, it shouldn't sound as structured or as much architecture or as much of a science experiment as it is. So it's good that it sounds natural. But on the other hand, for the amount of work that's put into it, it's also you know kind of a slap in the face. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, but no, the, our albums don't have any improvisation. They're all structure, and the and there's expressive playing, as in solos, guitar solos, and and the voice doing its thing sometimes, and the saxophone solo or something like this, but in terms of uh, what you're actually hearing, every note has been placed specifically in a certain place, has been written out, has been, uh, every sound is there for a reason, every vocal effect is there for a reason, is there as a comment, is there as a, as a character, is a, is a lot of, a lot of architecture. And so uh, yeah, how how do you actually manage to, to make that sound natural? I mean, a, a lot of bands do do that, and it just, does sound I, I suppose stale or mm. maybe stale's not the best word for it but it, but it actually sounds planned um i don't know how i don't know we just do it and then hope that it uh comes out right you know a lot of it is just uh i don't know <laughs> i don't know you just get lucky maybe yeah and it, it's the sound of people not uh taking material home to rehearse everything is learned on the spot and recorded right then and there, and ki first takes are kept, and mistakes are honored, and uh, it's the sound of the tension of having to learn it on the spot right there, which why it yeah, right. sounds the way it does. I, I actually uh, was going to ask about rehearsals, and I, I could imagine that if you had tried to rehearse, then it would be not so conducive to the actual yeah. sound. Yeah. You know, did did you decide from the start that there was going to be no rehearsals, or? did you try and rehearse and it just didn't work no it's just that's that's been the, the the form that i've taken on in recording these songs is uh that nobody gets to hear you know cedric is the only person who gets to hear beforehand what's happening the, the rest of the musicians they have no idea where they're at that when i'm teaching them a part they don't know if it belongs to this song or the other they don't know if it's a beginning a man an end or a chorus you know, because what happens uh, otherwise is that musicians tend to intellectualize music and they tend to uh, want to speak about music and and waste a lot of time, uh, you know, and put their forces in certain areas. Oh, this is the chorus, so I should play this the most intense that I can play it and the verses should be more laid back and blah, blah, blah. So therefore, I don't uh, let them know where they're at. It's like, uh, you know, they don't, I don't let them play with each other. I record everyone one at a time and uh, and they say, well, what hap What part is this? Is it the chorus? It doesn't matter. And what comes before it? Doesn't matter. What comes after it? Doesn't What's matter. My What's my votimation? Doesn't matter. The picture that this is the, the only part you'll ever play in this group and it's the most important part you could ever have to play, so play it like that. <laughs> so what happens is the combination of fear, excitement, anger, because for a musician, this is a, absolutely a backwards way of recording. No one records like this. Mm. And it's much, very much like in the sense of how we make films. You make films out of a sequence. You make films, maybe it's daytime, maybe it's nighttime, but you have the light to make it look like something that it's not. And you don't necessarily have two, room, two people in the same room when they're doing their lines. It's just a camera, and you do your lines, and somebody's reading the other lines off camera, and then you get the other actor, and you flip the camera around, and blah, blah, blah. And you make it come together in the editing room, and that's how these records are made. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> So, I mean, do you know what it's going to sound like then in your head? Of course. You can't, you can't, uh, it's like trying to make a film and not knowing what it's going to look like and not knowing. I mean, of course, there's oh, yeah, surprises this, along the yeah. way, of course, but that happens with anything. We can't control, I mean, music, film, writing, poetry, painting, all that stuff is bigger than, than us. So, of course, there's always surprises and there's always the project itself dictates certain things. But as far as, uh, planning out your basic structure, your beginning, middle, and end, and how it'll come off and uh, everything else and where the high points are and where the low, low points are and, and the transitions and everything else. Yeah, that's, that's, that's all there in the, in the imagination. Yeah. So, Cedric, when, when do you and the rest of the guys hear the 
finished song or the complete song. Well, I have a little more say so. I can hear it as it goes along. Right. But for the most part, everyone else in the band is going to get to see the movie when it comes out. So they get surprised there at the, the premiere. it comes out. Yeah. That's, they get to hear it along with the audience, which is probably a little frustrating, but that's what you sign up for when you want to play in the band. So yeah. that's how we do it. And uh, I mean, I get to, I just get to hear it be born along the way. Mm. So that's kind of cool. You're like the, uh, the father or the midwife yeah. of the song. Yeah. How do you then uh, translate that into a live show? I mean, your songs are obviously different when they when they come across live, but the essence of the song is still there. Yeah, that happens yeah. with all sorts of band. At a young age, I heard Kiss live, and I was so bummed out that it sounded nothing like my eight track cassette of it. So yeah, you know, you figure out it. Kiss young live age. doesn't sound anything like Kiss live albums. Yeah, though, so. exactly, because that's all done with. Uh, you know what I mean? You're pulling the wool over someone's eyes, as you are with cinema, as mm. anyone does with a studio album. You know what I mean? And then you grow up and you come to realize it shouldn't be so linear and, you know, having to make it sound like, I mean, because if you buy it one way, that's cool. It's going to sound that way forever. But then when you see it live, we're all humans. We make mistakes. You know, you play it faster. You make, you burp when you about to hit a note and you breathe air in and you can't hit the note. And it's not because you can't hit the note or whatever. You might have a bad singing day, but there's burps. There's just being human and, and not making it sound you know what it's supposed to sound like recorded mm. it should be that way just to kind of like honor the human spirit of you know and messing up i mean you say that 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 happens to every band you know translating the studio into a into a, a live mm -hmm. well some setting. bands some bands just sound robotically exactly like their record which is well yeah <laughs> torture for an audience but I think. there's still um there aren't that many bands where the bands don't actually know what the song is going to be, mm -hmm. you know, until such a late point. In yeah, it. because yeah. if they did, then within that whole time of them over-intellectualizing stuff, you could have written five albums.